This presentation is on facility layouts. We're going to focus on some tools that can be used to help design layouts for process facilities. One model is called the load distance model. Uh, and this can be used to improve an existing layout or uh, to do a layout where we're starting from scratch. Uh, either way, um, we, we would start with, with a kind of a rough schematic of the facility. This could be our existing facility or this could be uh, just kind of an arbitrary uh, grouping of um, the different departments or different functions that we know have to be included in our new facility. So here I've got this kind of thing for uh, a recreation center that we might be designing for our campus and you can think of this as just ripping the roof off the uh, recreation center and uh, you know here's kind of a schematic of how the different key areas in the, re in the rec uh, recreation center um, would be organized. So we can create we can create what's called a from to matrix and we can also create a distance matrix and then we can multiply the two matrices together and get some information that can help us uh, ascertain whether or not the layout is efficient and whether or not there's some things that we can do to improve the layout. And we had um, eight different departments in our uh, schematic on the previous slide. Just to kind of simplify things, uh, make it a little bit easier to understand, I've just taken a subset of uh, four of those eight departments and um, put them here in my matrices. Again, just to simplify things to make it a little bit more clear. If we were really doing this, we'd want to have an 8x8 eight eight matrix instead of a 4x4 four four matrix. Let's talk about what's in the matrices. In the first matrix, again, this is called a from two matrix, and what this indicates is the number of trips. Uh, so if we look at the first cell here, this is at the intersection of the free weight area and the aerobic machine area, and you can see that the number is 700. So that means that there would be 700 trips, you know, either tri a trip from the aerobic machine area to the free weight area or vice versa in this facility. And how we would get this information, uh, you know, might be just kind of observing what goes on in the facility for an hour or a couple hours that we think are representative. Uh, if this were a manufacturing application, we would probably have some data on the routings, and we'd be able to tell, um, uh, you know, how different jobs travel through the facility, and we could estimate the number of trips that way. If this were a distribution facility, you know, we could analyze orders and, and, and look at uh, patterns through the facility. So there's a lot of ways to get this information. Um, similarly, if we look at the next cell here, we can see that there, there's only about 50 trips per day between the free weight area and the pool, which should kind of make sense. Uh, there's a lot of trips between the locker room and the pool, as we can see down here, 800 trips. Um, the other matrix that we need to create uh, as an input to solving this problem is a distance matrix. So, uh, you know, I've just I've got the, the same things on the axes here. It's a 4x4 four four matrix, but instead of the number of trips in the body of the matrix, um, we've got the distance. There's a lot of ways to measure distance. If this is an existing facility, you know, we can, we can go out and we can actually measure the distance. Um, you know, we can estimate the distance in a new facility. Um, one way to get to get distance is, is to use distance on an x y axis where we just uh, well for example if we wanted to measure the distance from the free weight area to the weight machine area we just measure the distance over so it's one cell over so that's one and then the distance up or down so it's down one so one over and one down is two the distance between free weights and the climbing gym would be over one and then down one two uh, for a total of three and that, that, that gives us a pretty good estimate, especially because we tend to travel through hallways, and hallways tend to be rectilinear in a lot of facilities. So uh, that's one way to get the distances. Of course, there are other ways as well. So I've used that XY method to uh, estimate some distances here and put them in my distance matrix. Um, now what I want to do is, is I want to um, take the number of trips and multiply it by the distance, and that will give me the load distance for every pair um, of departments in, in my facility. So let's just demonstrate that here. I'll just type in the formula um, equals uh, C3 here um, times C10. And again, that's 700 times 1 or 700. Let's just go ahead and copy those formulas over. Thank you. 
and now I've completely populated my matrix. And what I want to do here is I want to look for uh, particularly long uh, load distance figures, and then I want to look for um, opportunities to improve. And I can see that, you know, far and away, my biggest uh, load distance number here is 1600 between the pool and the locker room. And that should kind of make sense to, to us. Uh, you know, pretty much anytime anybody goes to the pool, they're going to want to use the locker room. You know, that's not true of people who lift weights and, and, and people who use aerobic machines and climbing walls and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of trips uh, from the pool to the locker room, yet the distance from the pool to the locker room is not as short as it could be. It's not terrible. It's not a four, but it probably should be a one. We, we, so if we're thinking about improving the layout of our facility, that's one of the first things that we should think about is trying to move the locker room closer to the pool, either moving the locker room to the right or, or, or moving it up on the schematic. In our distance and load application, we used the number of trips between these different departments as an indicator of the volume of travel. We can use other things besides trips. For example, in some applications, it might be more appropriate to use the pounds of material or the cubic feet of material or something like that that are transferred from department to department or area to area. So the load distance model is a good model to use if um, eliminating or minimizing uh, distance or trips uh, or travel are critical considerations for layout. There might also be other considerations that are important. For example, in our recreation center example, um, we might want to have the snack bar by the entrance because we feel like uh, there will be a lot of traffic and that will maximize um, sales to the snack bar. There's uh, other layout applications where these type of uh, um, uh, more qualitative, judgmental uh, considerations are maybe more important than distance. And if that's the case, uh, there's another tool that can deal pretty well um, with, the, with, with those types of considerations, and that's a tool called systematic layout planning. Um, and instead of uh, noting um, the distance and the number of trips from department to department, um, we think more about you know, qualitatively how important is it for the different departments to be near each other. And for each pair of departments, we can, we can assign a code. And here's one popular coding schematic, AEIOUX. Um, and it, it ranges from, from A to U uh, in decreasing order of importance. So A means adjacency is absolutely necessary. In other words, it's critical for these two departments to be next to each other. Um, U means it's unimportant. It doesn't really matter. And then we have X, which is a situation where proximity might be undesirable. You know, for example, um, in a restaurant, uh, a lot of people laying out restaurants think it's a good idea not to have the bathroom and the door to the kitchen right next door to each other. Uh, if we're in a facility where we're uh, making furniture, it's uh, probably a good idea to uh, keep the um, operations that generate a lot of dust, like sanding and other surfacing operations, away from uh, finishing and painting type operations because dust uh, can ruin a finish very easily. So those would be some examples of some X's. So we can... Um, make a, uh, a chart. Again, this is a matrix, kind of like the matrix, matrices, matrices that we've been looking at, but again, we have these qualitative ratings instead of um, numerical distances or uh, number of trips. So, for example, we have a U here at the intersection of design and paper storage. It tells us it's unimportant uh, for those two to, to be next to each other. It just doesn't really matter. On the other hand, for printing and packaging and shipping, we can see that it's really critical because there's an A at the intersection of those two uh, departments. So again, we might have an existing layout, or we might have a, um, a proposed layout uh, that we're thinking um, about evaluating, or you know, we might just kind of uh, start with a list of departments and just kind of put them in at random and begin to use this tool. It's possible to put the information on the matrix that we just created into a computer program, and a computer program can come up with an optimal layout or near-optimal layout for us. 
but it's also possible, uh, particularly where there aren't too many different departments involved, to just do some manual analysis and come up with a layout that's, that's very good or maybe even optimal. And one way that we can do that is we can use a series of lines to um, indicate um, the A, the uh, I, the E, the O, the U, and the, the other ratings that we dealt with. Uh, you know, one fairly common way to do it is to have an A be, be, be uh, denoted by four lines, an E by three lines, and so on, and a um, X denoted by a dotted line. Let's just demonstrate that. Um, I can see on my matrix that um, b um, binding and handiwork and packaging and shipping are an A. So it's critical for those to be ne near each other, and I can indicate that on my um, schematic here by putting four lines between them. I can see that uh, the relationship between binding and handiwork, or I'm sorry, between binding and printing is an E, so I could put three lines to link those up, and so on. And if I continue to do that, I'd get something that looks like this. Again, an A, which is really critical, is four lines, uh, an E is three lines, and so on, in decreasing importance. U's don't get any lines, X's would get dotted lines. So, if it's critical for the A's to be uh, near each other, and then what I want to look for here is I want to look for um, long, thick lines, because some of my thick lines are A's, some of my thick lines are E's. I particularly want to minimize the distance of, of, of the thickest lines, the fours, and, and also the threes. So one thing that I could do in this facility to minimize this very long line is move printing um, over here next to packaging and shipping. And that would really reduce, that would reduce the length of this line. Um, it would also reduce the length of, of this line. Another thing that I might want to do um, is also move paper and storage over here as well. That's not going to give me as great an impact of moving printing, but that's going to give me some positive impact. If I do that, my layout would look like this, and if you did the, uh, the line analysis um, on this layout here, you would see that the fat lines are short and that's really what we're trying to achieve. Some of the, the, uh, the single lines are very long, but that's okay because it's not that important for those uh, facilities to be close to one another.